first meeting in the, this is only our, this is our third meeting in the newly renovated town hall. So, welcome. And we Thank have you. on by, why doesn't this mouse? Okay, so we have on by Zoom, Katie, our recording person, Betsy Perra, Bill Pell, Nina Gus, and Orca, but you're Orca. <coughs> so you're, is that you here? It, no, that's for them to record everyone who's speaking okay. so that they can be put into the video later. Okay, so Katie, we don't need to record this. All right. Um, public comment for items not on the agenda. Do we just have, do we have two folks that want to speak? I don't know how many, do anyone? Yeah, I'm going to get there. Two folks that want to speak on public comment in the audience. What about on uh, Zoom? Anybody on Zoom have public comment? You got to turn your mic. You got to turn your microphone on and at least please answer yes or no. All set. Public, public comment. All right. So I'm assuming Bill and Rini and Betsy don't have a public comment. All right. So right. We have Thank you, Denise. Minutes. So Doug gets Doug gets seven and a half minutes, and Jan gets seven and a half minutes. Okay, we're fighting over the Well, it's taken up somebody's time, so. So, um, I'm here. It's not on the agenda, but it's a warning from Planning Commission of what's coming in the next couple months uh, that I wanted to give you a highlight of. Um, Planning Commission. <laughs> to uh, authorize planning commission to review the designated village centers for East Callis and Maple Corner. We think we're going to reapply a new one for Adamant because we want to change the boundary to include the Adamant Community Center, which is not again now. And then we will be applying for a designated village center for North Callis. And we'll be sending, submitting some of these um, Request for motions, <laughs> I guess I'll put it that way, mm -hmm. um, in the next, you know, probably month or so for that, so that we can get John McCullough started on doing the work, the paperwork. Now, as a result of the request to have a designated village center for North Callis, it meant that we had to do an amendment to our town plan through some tricky thing with the state. So. We will be, and in order to do that, we also have to do forest integrity to meet Act 171. So we are working on amendments to the town plan. And what I want to kind of put in the hat is that the select board hopes to have our hearing on. You mean the planning? I mean, the planning commission hopes to have our hearing on the town plan amendment on September 21st, which means the select board hearing roughly around October 10th. We're condensing all of this as fast as we can so that everything can be finalized by the end of the year so that North Callis can apply um, for designated village center and get the tax credits that they want to get. And that's the reason for the rush. Um, and I, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that we Sounds have. Sounds great. Yeah, so, good. Okay. So you'll give us a timeline for when the PC is going to hold their hearing. Do you have to have a graph? I think I sent it to you. Yeah, yeah but I'm thinking of that. It's that form that we have to fill out. There's no form. It's just a thing that says. I thought there was something, some kind of a document that had the dates you have to do this and do that, or is that zoning? No, that was the Gantt chart relative to our dates from what we have to do to get the, the town plan. Right, I'm remembering some form that we have to fill out to show that we did this, this, and this. Yes, that comes in, at, that starts the process. Once we publish for the public hearing, yeah. the clock of the process starts. Okay, that's... And we have to go within 15 days, and I'm gonna ask Barbara Butler to take care of that paper document. Okay. Because that, if we screw that up, that Right, that. well that's what I'm talking about, that's is that, that okay. I forget what you call it, it's some kind of a... Like, this is the process that we have right. to do. Right. So okay. The, the clock starts ticking. Sure, go ahead, Sharon. Um, yeah, I just 
thank you for coming to tell us about this. And this feels to me like something where I would like to have a little more time. This on is really the, other business. Well, on the on the agenda at a future yeah. time yeah. before the September dates get anywhere near to like hear it again from you, ask a few more questions, maybe see something in writing. Not tonight, obviously. No, because this I didn't. Yeah, this was a kind of a right. public comment. Heads up. Yep. Would you want to see the draft and the update town plan at the point that we're ready to deliver it to the state and the Central Vermont Regional, which is going to be hopefully the middle of August? Yeah, I think I think yeah. that would be. No, yeah. I think that would be great to get a head start on it. Yep. All right, your time's up. Doug's turn. Um, I don't know anything about that. Uh, when I hear plan, it scares the hell out of me. You know, I was I was on the planning board. I was on the zoning board years ago. And you know, I when I hear plan, it scares me. Like I said, the hell out of me. The plan's already there. It's just amending to put build to. Well, I know how it came. I know how it came. I know when I was on it, we tried to stay away from planning people what to do, what they're going to. You know, plan's already there. She's doing talking about minor amendments to recognize village centers of. I think I'll look into it a little bit. It's not broader than the town than that. Okay. okay. I guess why I'm here mainly to talk about the animals in the road and you know the horses. The horses, the horses. The horses. and make a corner. Yeah, I yeah. just heard the chickens out here crowing and I got a rooster you can have. I don't know what the heck they were saying, but I think they were saying something like the guys are full of, you know what? And uh, you know I know farmers have a right, if you open that up, you'll open up a can of worms. And farmers have a right to farm. And you know, I, you know, I got farm, we got cows, I got cows. They don't get a road once in a while. Yeah, that's not the issue, that's not what we're looking Well, you're talking about her horses being in the road, right? Chronically. Huh? You know, the, not, if you want to stay and stay for the meeting when we're talking about this, that would be great. Did you have something else you wanted to talk about besides the ordinance? I just don't want you to take up your time because this is a we have on the we agenda. Need more time on this. We have yeah. on the agenda, hopefully around a quarter of eight, to look at adopting the the ordinance. And we can amend the language if you help us at that point. But then we have to do a new public hearing, so but, just saying. So you know. Yeah, we try to be really sensitive to what you're saying. Yeah, and believe me, there's no one on this board that doesn't get that. We tried to be really careful about how we crafted it so that it isn't just the farmer whose cow gets out once in a while or their pig gets out once in a while. This is habitual. Okay, so don't waste my time now. You can talk about it later. Yeah. It's all bull crap. She can sue the neighbors. She can do this. Don't get the town involved in it. Okay, no, did you have not. something? Hmm? Or not? Did you have something else? No. No? No, not this one. Oh, I got lots to say. I got lots to say. I know you do. But I'm not going to say it right now. Okay. I have a lot to say about the roads and the, 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 you know, I can't, it's personal. Right? Personnel. 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 Personnel, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank cool. you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have any? We can talk about road conditions, though. We have, we didn't use all our time. Does Gail no. have any? No, I think, Gail, are you here for public comment or your curb cut? Sorry, the Kirk. Oh, Kirk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else on Zoom just have public comment? All right. Um, all right. Additions or changes to the agenda. And we already wanted to welcome Mark Malfoy to the board. Um, thank you for your stepping up and willing to serve the town and help us with all the many issues we deal with. Um, Sandra, treasurer, you had um, asked us to sign the, Sandra, are you there? Okay, so I'm not sure. I am here. Okay, thank you. There she is. There she is. Good to see you. So we Good didn't to see you. have a chance, we were going to sign the Nemric license software agreement on June 30th when we met with the road crew, but we didn't have a forum. So tonight, um, we need to sign this document. For, is this for another year, right? Yes. Okay. And there are two, two, 
two sets of the con two different two document two sets of the same document, both needing signature. Um, there's a user end user software license agreement, and then there is the software support agreement. So I would entertain a motion. Um, that we approve the end user software license agreement and the software support agreement for another year. Is there any second? And then we can discuss it. Second. Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments to ask Sandra about the license? Okay, are you ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. All right, very good. And then we have, um, Katie, can you call up the internal controls checklist, please? Does anybody feel like we need a light? Or is everybody ready? Need what? Lights? Sound good. Okay. Yeah. Denise, is this correct, or should I open the PDF? Should I open the PDF, because this one is, and this is something, this internal controls checklist is something we do every year. We are, we do a, um, oh, it's, it's, can you fix it? No, I'll do it. Okay. So every year we have an audit. Every month we have, you know, the annual audit by Solomon and Powers. Every month NEMRIC does a monthly audit. So we really just need, I'm sure everybody's looked at this. Right? Everybody looking at it? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That yeah. 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 So it's kind of the same questions every year. Sandra has, um, fills it out every year. And there you have it. Um, comment? I have a question. Sure. Sandra. Um, of all of these questions, um, you know, various yes, no's down the columns, and the, the, the questions are not constructed in such a way that I'm looking for all yeses or all no's. So my question is, is there any one of these, either a yes or a no, that is not considered a best practice? Let me just uh, quickly look through. So, like, for example, do you reconcile bank and ledger balances monthly? No. M makes me wonder, well, should we be? Um, oh, no, I do not. And so Nimric does, and that's the best practice. Okay. Um, that someone other than the person writing the checks, the best practice is to have someone other than the person writing and signing the checks uh, to reconcile the account and to uh, manage the statements. Yeah, and that's what NEMRIC does every month. So, Correct. Okay. So, so do so. Uh, so you do you reconcile? So you're interpreting the you as literally the Sandra. Right, as the preparer, I'm signing it. Yeah. So it's not on behalf of the town. It's, a, it's not a great form. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's not a great form. I think we've had this. So Nemrick does it monthly. Okay. Yeah, I think we've had some of these same conversations every year when we get this form. It, the form is really not. Right. Is it literally, I, I didn't even go look it up. Sandra, do you happen to know if the form itself is in the statute and could we take a little bit of editorial liberties with it in the future? Like so that, you know, the best practice or is always a yes answer? Yeah, the statute well, this, references up top. Right? This is the no, form yeah, that is linked like to the statute. But I don't know. I don't, but, it's, I don't, but it's not word for word. I doubt it's word for word. Yeah, so, so I don't know. I there just, may be a rule, Sharon, 
There may be a rule. I can, I can, I didn't take the time to do the research. I did, what I really wondered is, is there anything here that isn't a best practice? But if we had more staff or whatever, it would, the answer would be different. Maybe that's an easier question to answer. Um, let me think about that. See the U, it, it, it goes back and forth this form down at the bottom. It asks if you, me, are a participant in any business which does business with the town. It's, it's not a well-drafted form. So um, you, you get professionally audited annually where all of these questions and more are asked by the auditors in person. And that is how they formulate their audit and they make their findings. Um, I, would th I don't think this is a very good assessment tool, but if a town is not independently audited on a regular basis, it is at least a bit of a litmus test for the select board once a year. So the bottom line is because we are professionally audited regularly, this, this is a really, the form is really far afield from something that's going to be truly helpful to us. I would agree with that statement. Okay. okay. I'll make the motion that we accept Sandra's um, report as evidenced on the controls checklist. Well, you know, it says at the bottom, the signature line says received by it. Say okay. We agree to it or disagree. Right. I it's said just, accept. It's just, we just an said acknowledgement that we've okay. seen what she's remitted. I think we want to say received. Okay. I, all right. I said accept. All right. That we received. We acknowledge receipt. Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And I wrote on my copy. Does anyone have one that we can circulate to, to sign? Let's just sign, let's sign, just that, sign one. that one. Okay. Just, just <laughs> pass it around, Mark. Okay. Um, ARPA, ARPA funds. Our good old friend, ARPA. Um, we've all been hearing about and learning about, and we've talked about a few times here um, about ARPA. This is money from the federal government coming to towns, county government, even though Vermont doesn't have county government. Um, and I've, been, I've attended some webinars and done a bunch of reading on some of this ARPA stuff, and it sounds like it's going to be, we're going to get a certain amount at the end of this, this, uh, this fiscal year, then we're going to get a certain dollar amount the next fiscal year, and then the LCT and our representatives in Washington, D.C. are trying to figure out, because Vermont doesn't have county government, how are they going to allocate that money? Is it going to go to towns or the only county government there is is courts? So that's a yet to be known. The one thing that we do know and we have to do right away is to at least go in and request the funds. I've talked to staff at VLCT, um, Wendy Wilton, who's new to Nemrick and is going to be the ARPA guru in helping towns um, do the account, the um, management part of the use of that money. So tonight, what we need to do is just agree that we're going to go in to this portal, request the money. If we decide we don't want this money because it's too much of a hassle, we can say never mind and send it back. But if we don't do this by July 15, we're out of luck. Let's do it. So I'm going to suggest that if the board would please authorize myself and Sandra to go into the portal and make the request for the funds, we can figure out later how we want to spend it. We've got CV Fiber. I'm expecting um, East Calais Fire District to request some of the funds. We can use the funds to pay for Nemrick to do the overall accounting and everything. And they said that they would do what they're going, their work is going to be whatever the town needs to administer the funds. 
And that's new news, right? Last time we talked about this, we, there wasn't necessarily anybody out there positioned to do what you just described, and everybody could said, okay, we'll do it. Right, and they are working hand in hand, in hand with VLCT. VLCT will be the ones determining, you know, no, you can't use ARPA funds to build that doghouse. But yes, you can use ARPA funds for this. The NEMRIC will help us with data entry, whatever we want them to do. Maybe we could use it for a horse house. Well, okay, we won't go there. So they re recommend, they being VLCT, that we make a motion, and they've got several different ones to choose from. There's one that's really easy that says, I move that we name to be the contact person for the Town of Callis CLRF award from the U.S. Treasury. That will authorize myself and Sandra, between the two of us, figure out going into the portal okay. to request the funds. Good. That's all this will be, is just to request the funds. No decisions on what they will be used for. We need to figure that out. Probably, yeah. we're gonna be doing this a lot. What are we gonna, what are we gonna use these funds yep. for? Okay, yeah. How do you, because you know, you don't wanna just give it to one and not another good project. So I think we need to see what other. And we don't even know yet exactly, or did I miss this part, exactly what we, We'll, we'll apply for the maximum we're allowed to under whatever right. the rules are. What, right. what I do know is, I think it's 87,000 this fiscal year, and I think it's 87,000 next fiscal year, and like I said, the county government piece hasn't been decided. Right. So I make a motion that we authorize Denise and Sandra working in tandem to represent us in applying for these ARPA funds. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, that's all we need to do tonight on this. And we will keep you updated um, with what's the next steps. Um, we, we've already obviously talked to CD Fiber. When I get um, a request from the East Callis Fire District, I'll, we'll talk about that. And you know, what other projects in town are there that we can use this for? And, and I'm not gonna go into detail because this is not time, but when, when and if we decide to allocate the money to CD Fiber, I'd like to have some conditions on that. Um, it, and I'd suggest you all look at the BT Digger today. That, uh, what is it? Fiber Down South, oh, okay. Downtown Bridge. I don't know. But anyway, they, they, uh, like they, they sub it out. Like CD Fiber people aren't going to do it. They're going to hire a contractor like Eustace Cable. And those guys came through Tunbridge and they snip off wire and they're just dropping in a farmer's hay fields, this particular farmer, and they got caught in the, the harvester and ground up and it wound up in their feed and it's now their cows are dying. Oh, and it's wow. stainless, so the, the magnets normally give your cattle to grab that, that metal doesn't work, metal. So oh, it's a disaster, so we wanna make sure that the contractors are trained on not allowing any yeah. wire to be left behind. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, and we, if you remember, there was a memo, an MOU that um, David gave us. We sent it to Jim, he had some comments on it, but I think we really need to yeah, look at do some too. more investigation into this. Yeah. And also, there is, yeah, I think there is some money coming from the federal government, and I don't know whether that's part of what they're already getting, or the state already has, or if there's more. But, you know, they're getting a ton of money to do this broadband build out. But I just think it's, it's, let me just finish my thought maybe go ahead. Um, I think it's important based on the lesson we hopefully learned or the beating we took back when uh, East Montpelier Cal's fire department mm -hmm. authorized a crane right over there and then we got billed or we got sued to mm -hmm. reimburse the, the crane that company that was brought in to move the other crane that fell over the bank mm -hmm. for $220,000 and we wound up in spending like 60 grand in legal costs defending against that. Um, and because they're basically a proxy or a delegated authority, that was the argument. And to the extent that CD Fiber is putting cable into our town on our collective behalf, we are members of CD Fiber. The same kind of thing could come up if, say, a company like Eustace Cable would start dumping debris all over Doug's field and Doug's cattle or his fields are destroyed because you can't harvest feed off of them, so. Unbelievable um, that they would yeah, do that. Yeah, so anyway, so we need to really have our ducks in order on this now. Good point, John. Okay. 
Right. Rick, said, did you I mean, want to say something yeah, else? Yeah, when, when we might establish some basic criteria where if we look at these two and really use these dollars wisely, mm -hmm. so we get maximum bang for our buck over time. Right. You know, yeah. So I think we should have some criteria how we would prioritize. Yeah, how, we would, how we're going to review the projects and mm -hmm. what's the overall need for the town? How does it? Yeah. I think there's yeah. a lot of criteria we can come up with to make it fair. Yeah, yeah. In best interest. All right, um, if you're ready to move on, I am going to go sit over there because you're going to talk about BCDP. And I will also recuse myself as a member of Katie. Awesome, then there's room for Jan to come and sit here as the ECCT rep. Katie, they're going to want the um, BCDP file called out, please. Yep, thanks, Katie. Okay. You got your head, that's the really the important part. Trust, <laughs> buzz. The lady can do it, the next better, and the budget starts coming out. Oh, that's true. So, um, John and Rick, we're the, we're the board right we're now. We're the quorum. We're the, we're the quorum. So, um, the East Callis um, Community Trust folks approached us and asked for our support in applying for an, en an enhancement grant. Is that reasonable language? Um, an enhancement to the grant, to the already received grant, uh, in the amount of fifty thousand dollars because of the escalation of building materials since we applied for and were awarded a grant back in the spring. So you guys both remember we we supported um, a grant request that was that was uh, one, and the number is here somewhere. Um, Signed a resolution. Yep. Um, there's a lot of numbers, and I'm January not seeing. 11, I'm not seeing. Yeah. Um, yes. So, so the request is that we um, authorize or authorize and sign the support of this letter of support. It will be mailed to the. Vermont Community Development Program with a letter from Liz Curry, who is the consultant, and a list of project completions to date, which I did not print out and bring with me. Okay. Anything you add? You have things to yeah, basically substitute. that's the request for tonight is to approve the enhancement um, to add on the $50,000 to the existing BCDP grant that we have. So. Um, you're going to go from 383,000. You might as well go for um, uh, supporting 433,000, right? <laughs> and just to say, there's the number 383. Um, this is all. This is state grant money that's in a pot for these kinds of grants. It's all federal. Federal. It's federal, federal, okay. Yeah. But it's not. It's not town money. It's yeah. it's us applying for a pot of money that's already authorized, and somebody's going to get this money. Yeah, it's, we are the ECCT is the sub sub recipient, but. The town is the, right. the organization that is monitoring all of the money that goes in and out. And the money is coming from the feds, basically. Right. Yeah, my point, yeah, I wanted to just underscore it's not town. It's, it's not, not local tax. It's not local tax money. Questions? No, we have heard all sorts of questions. Okay. Anybody up on the, let me put my glasses on. Katie, you seeing any questions? No hands raised? Okay. Um, I think we're ready to accept a motion to authorize our signatures on this letter of support for the enhancement. So moved. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Can I just make one comment about that? Absolutely. Okay. Um, Liz reminded me that um, we're asking for 50. BCDP might not have all that money. We may get less. That's not to indicate that they, BCDP, are not in support of us. Okay. Uh, of this old district. They're kind of, they may be running out of funds. Um, the other thing is, Liz, we will be coming back to the board. Um, I don't know when exactly, but we, we're going to be making a checklist for Sandra, who's going to have to bear a bunch of the organizational skills of moving the money back and forth. Um, she's also going to provide a list of things for the grant administrator, Ms. Sharon here, um, that we are going to have to have 
certain things done by the town by October 1st in order to make sure we get this money. Um, and so I think I'm just... Such as by the town, like such as what? Well, we have to have Jim Barlow look at this and do a reference to oh. it. We have to have certain things that Sharon has to do, making sure that the um, policies that you agreed to in January are actually enacted and put into place in the town. So mm -hmm. if somebody goes on to our website, they see mm -hmm. that we have an anti-whatever-whatever. Right, we, and we said at the time that we would see if we got the grant, so let me make a note of that. So, right, all of that stuff. So, Liz will be coming before you with a checklist for both Sandra and Sharon in order to give you that up. And I think, you know, just be aware, we'll be back. There were, so last time, so last time, the whole grant application process, I think it's probably going to be similar for what we just authorized Denise and uh, Sandra to do. It's a lot of go in, sign this, fill this form out, say yes, submit, hit a button, hit a button wait for some, something else to happen, then go in and do something. It's a process in the, in the guts of the state grant application. So I'm assuming there's still some more. But right now, making sure the policies are, are loaded on the website is what I'm going to write down. Then we've already passed, passed them. We did that back in the winter. Okay. 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 All right, anything else in this guy? Thanks, Jan. Thank you, Jan. Denise and Mark. Thank you, Denise Thank you. and Mark. We want our store back. Yes, we do. Okay. Um, Thank you. Be cool. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Road Commissioner, you didn't send me anything that you had for the agenda items, so we're just going to do curb cut. If you want to, I can I'll turn my chair. I just don't like to have my back. I stand here. Oh, you might want to come closer. It's kind of an echo. Yeah. yeah, it is very echoing. You got to fix that. Yeah, we do. We got to. Will anybody have some nice old quilts? Did Jeff just come on? We should have some nice old quilts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone should tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did, you, did you tell? Did you announce that we have come? They're very to valuable. Jeff, that we tell Jeff. Jeff Cannon. Oh, Jeff, we're, Jeff, we're done with um, BCDP. And we approved it. And it's approved. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> so, Katie, could you call up the curb cut application, please? Okay. So, Gail has filed, submitted another curb cut application. Um, and I have it right at my fingertips somewhere. Here it is. It is curb cut application 2021-05. You're already misbehaving on this first meeting. Knock it off. When we get a break, I'll answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> is it important to get an answer? No, it's right not away? important. Okay. He can, totally not. He's fine without an answer. Okay. You want to know where the bathrooms are? They're over there. Okay. Okay. So this is another curb cut on your property. This one is off of Singleton Road. So how many lots have you created over, overall? You have your house, and then I know we did Finney's, and we did another one recently, and now we have this, right? Is that, is that four? It's five. No, no. No, it's not five. It's four. Four new lots, but your Pardon house. Me? Your house remains or becomes a lot. Your house is one. But I haven't done anything with that. No, I know. So it's your house. It's one lot originally, right? Yeah. That's your house. And then if you create a lot on that, that's two lots, right? Because it's your house and the new lot. It's two lots. Um. That's how it works. And then if you, if I take my place, I divide it in two, that's two lots. My house, and then the lot across the road. That, that's how it works, you see? Well, this is kind of getting like this. Okay, go ahead. Shall I start from the very beginning, 12 years ago? Yes. Okay. I subdivided the 13 acres on Animal Road, in which there are three parcels. Is, that, is, is 13 acres the total amount of property that you own? I'm sorry? No, 
is the show. Oh, okay. Sorry, go ahead. I just didn't know how many. Okay, bear with me, okay? I had 13 acres. The original one I made um, so 12 years ago belongs to Pat Kenny. And about four years ago, I sold the second one to Glee Fish, which is the one Adam had. Going towards Adam had. And that leaves the third one in the middle. But hold that thought. Recently, I'm in the process of selling seven acres south of my house. And I've been working with the zoning administrator and the surveyors, and, and in fact, I just recorded. So seven acres and the 4.25 is being combined. Okay. Into one so I'm. Um, so Let her finish. Okay, go ahead. I'm just going to Go ahead. Are you following so far? So that's three. And I'm aware of this, but I'm really asking the curve cut for will be the fourth. And so I'm aware when we get to that point. So most likely that's going to have to go to the DRB. But what I'm just asking for right now is the curb cut. I'm trying to help the people that are buying it, okay? Mm -hmm. And just so you know, as somebody that's born and raised in Calus is moving back to Calus. Great. So. Yeah, I like that. Let's, let's see. Like you. Huh? Like you. Well, well, a little bit different. But does that answer your question? I think so. Um, so you, so you've got a total now. And we're just talking about a curb cut right now. We're not ready to talk about. Okay. So this makes curb cut number four? No. Well. Three. Three? It'll still be four. No, it'll be. No, it'll be Basically, four. Basically, <coughs> lot in the middle between Glee and something that's three in it. It's, it's, it'll be four. But didn't we just approve a curb cut? Okay. Yes. Yeah, different places. On the Adam Road. Road. No, different on that and that, between Penny and Glee right. Fish. Okay. I just so didn't know what the name, I can't remember what the name was. But well, that, and see, that curb cuts there because he's purchasing that lot and the adjacent lot, mm -hmm. and that's being considered one. Okay. Right. Oh, okay, that's for buying it. Okay. <coughs> All right, so um, board members, you have questions? Uh, I have questions, and what I'm asking myself is, does do my questions really matter? <laughs> right, um, well, that's just it. it. We're looking at the curb cut. Right. All we do is, well, all we do is approve the curb cut. It's up to the ZA, DRB, for anything else. So, so I, so just with the, the, I'm going to, I, if I'm yelling, I apologize. I want to make sure that you can hear me, Gail. I, I'm confused now. We had a curb cut for Glee, a curb cut for Pat, and then we recently approved one in the middle? Correct. But if that curb cut in the middle is the one that's going to provide access to what is now a combined lot, what are we doing yes, tonight? Yes, yes. We're doing yeah. yet another one. And so that has nothing to do with the combined? Right. Okay. So that, yeah, that, and as I say, that's already with the surveying company. That, that's so, between you and the purchaser. That's not our issue. It's right. still, you're just making a lot I'm just bigger. just asking for a curve. Right. right. Yeah, right. then we get that. That's right. Right. On a different right. spot that has nothing right. to do right. with that so, combined. This is totally separate. This is a brand new curve. Cross the road. Um, okay. So, so we need to we need to just focus on the curb cut. Right. So Alfred, have you been out there to check it out? Yes. Okay. And do you have um I didn't I forgot to bring that form with me. So tell me what conditions, if any, 
Well, hang on. Before we get there, do Alfred, I want to hear Alfred say affirmatively that it meets all of our standards. Well, I think that's what we're asking. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to go to He's what are the conditions. Yeah. He's going to tell us what, Stand, you know, that it, what, okay. what it needs to do, if anything. Well, the, the one thing that I noticed, and it's a little bit unclear in my mind whether it meets our standard or not. Our standard requires 300 feet mm -hmm. of sight distance. Right. However, it's, it's 120 feet from the proposed curb cut to an intersection. So is there an intersection, is an intersection, I mean, to me, if an intersection, that's gonna slow people down. It's gonna, you're stop, that's a stopping point for the traffic that's gonna enter that. If you, if you look beyond that intersection, you've got plenty of distance. So the intersection I'm talking about is Leonard Road. Is um, Leonard Road a class? So the curb cut is here to her house. It's 120 feet to Leonard Road, but sight distance continues beyond that intersection, clear up at a road. What does the standard say for intersections? Well, I, I haven't looked that up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one thing I didn't look up, but it's it's right now it's 120 feet from the proposed curb cuts to the first intersection, which is Leonard Road. Well, if you remember, we just... The site distance goes, down, goes beyond. So does, the does the intersection interfere with that standard that mm -hmm. we have, that 300 feet? But you can see 300 feet anyway. You just have to see through the intersection. Correct. And then see, and it's, you absolutely can see beyond that intersection. It's perfectly clear, right? So the, the other direction is my concern. that <coughs> exactly what it's... Excuse me. Have you seen it? I don't think we have this document in this folder. I've searched my email also. But yeah, well, as long as you can see it, that's what it's about. The question is, is you know, can it be improved on that lot face or not, or you know, where that is? So that, you know, that's really the question. You can tend not to deny people access to land if it's not possible. Right. You know, so you know, that would be my question: is is there a way to reasonably? You know, improve the site distance. He's it's saying there is no issue. Oh, well, I, mean, I, don't think there is I, got issue. I think it's totally safe. Yeah. yeah. Particularly because of those intersections. And then yeah. people are going to stop at those intersections. Right. They're supposed to stop at those well, intersections. Well, are there stop signs at those intersections? I don't remember. Yes. It's not a yield, yield sign. Yes. On the yes. Valley yeah. Road. That's not a road speed. But, but. Where, I don't remember, where is Leonard Road in proximation to Fowler coming in? Is it directly across? It's, it's not. It's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Right. The intersection, on the map, that on intersection. The map, on the that, but it's, it it's almost quite offset. Right so to me, I don't, I don't, there is no stop sign at Leonard Road, but so to me, Leonard Road isn't really an intersection for, for traffic from Singleton to Adamant. So are there three... No, it's, an it's a class three road. Yeah. It's a town class three road. But it's, but it's not one where somebody coming from John's house is going to stop if they're headed to Adamant Co-op. No. no. It's a through that's, intersection. That's a through intersection. It's no different than this intersection here. Right. In, in ter terms of the physical intersection, in terms of the level of traffic, it's different tales from when it used to Leonard Road. Um, there's yeah, some orange traffic that right around. People, <laughs> myself, first of all, and anybody is very cautious yeah. when they come out of my right. place and usually stop at Leonard at uh, Singleton Road to look both ways. Uh, absolutely. But the but the new curb cut is is it off from Leonard Road or off from Adamant or Singleton? It's off from Singleton. Singleton. Right. And so is, is there three so forget about Leonard Road. Is there three hundred feet line of sight both ways coming onto Singleton to Singleton and then Singleton into Adamant? Three hundred there's three hundred feet both ways. Right. Yeah. All right. 
There's just an intersection in between that 300 feet, within that 300 feet. So we're not using, we're not making any argument that the, that the intersection is somehow boosting the line of sight that doesn't meet. We're sort of piling it on and saying, plus that, there's this Leonard Road thing that maybe people would stop next. So, all right. But if, it, but if we didn't have Leonard Road, you still have 300 feet either way, no problem. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I have to get there in my own way. Okay. So, um, so does it need a... That, it, it needs a culvert. Fifteen a culvert in there. Fifteen inch culvert. It does, that's right. You need to know it, it needs a culvert. It does okay. need a culvert. That's the one thing I need. Yeah. No. Okay, that's what we figured. Um, there's not really a great ditch there, but as soon as you put a driveway in, it's that's the we, water's going to come up there. So we'll have to have We've already got one, so yeah. okay. okay. So are we sitting? <laughs> So are we saying it meets the B-71 standards then because there's, there is in fact this 300 foot sight distance that we just talked about? Yes, okay. I believe it would be that. And the basic geometry of it. All right. It's quite flat. It's and almost yeah, yeah, and there's no intersection <coughs> evaluation or standard as far as you know in B-71. There is one. What do, say, what do they say about intersections? I don't remember, I just remember there is one. Oh, well, that we need to know what that is. That's a function of speed usually. It's not necessarily to be something wide, it's a different. Well, we're asking, we, we review against these standards. Right. And does it meet those standards? That's the question. Do you. And is there an intersection criteria? Rich, could you investigate? That maybe we have to put this off to next time. When I made a, when I made a, probably a year ago, Rick, I made a draft form to literally go through every standard. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. I can send that to you. Maybe it's time to like actually adopt that. And then Alfred, so it was kind of, do you remember this? It was kind of set up so that you say yes, 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 yes. <coughs> and then we have that in our record. Did that other ever materialize? That form, I remember I was talking about. No, I made one. We never adopted it. I made we should, one. We, we didn't it adopt out. it, but I can find it again. Yeah, once more we dig that back out because I think Rick, if you can, I'll send it to the, I'll send it to you, Rick, and you can put your eyes on it. Check that out, and we'll have to postpone this until July twenty sixth. So that's for class three. That's a class three, right? Why? Well, I'm not because we need to check the B seventy one standards for intersections. Or we need the sight line distance. Sight line distance. It's, it's, it's not B71. So, so that I need to make changes? Yeah. So the changes can be made by the next meeting? Well, I'm trying to see if I can pull up the B71 yeah. standards yeah. right now. And we'll see if there's an intersection requirement. I don't know this if you're going to be able to do it. Commercial tomorrow. drive standards for residential and commercial. Okay. Can we go on with another item and then come back to this while he's looking? Um, I thought this was already being done by the time we had this meeting. Well, so yeah, let's go, go back to the line of questioning. I asked Alfred, do we have line of sight? He said yes, both directions. Yes. Right. And I asked Alfred, are there any other standards regarding intersections? And he said he didn't know. So if he said no, then we'd be done. If he said yes and I reviewed it and it meets it, then we'd be done. But when someone says, I don't know, I still need to look at that, that's where we're at. Right. But I'm, I'm going to look at it right here, and then I'm going to look at it, and maybe we can still resolve it. So let's see if we can do that. All right, so let's, um, well, John's looking that up. I don't think it talks about that. Well, John's looking that up. Katie, can you call up the dog, uh, domestic animal ordinance, please? Yeah. All right, so um, there was a committee that met, I think we met twice, and we came up with the ordinance. It's been reviewed twice by the town's attorney. Um, some tiny modifications after that review, the, the last review. And you all have had this document to review for a while. So I'm hoping that tonight, we can do the process on the last page that talks about adoption history. Agenda item at regular select board meeting held on Monday, July 12th. This gets the clock 
to ticking for the um, for the adoption process. So I'm hoping that everybody's looked at it, everybody's good with it. Um, there aren't any tended here, anything from the select board members about potential changes. So, I well, I I. I missed the part where I was supposed to ask for changes. I, I do have, I want to hear, I have some questions maybe, clarifications, Denise. So, uh, Katie, thank you. It's around the penalties, mm -hmm. and I'm picking up on, on, I think it was at our last meeting you said that the, the enforcement officer is the animal control officer, correct? It can be the animal control officer. It can be the constable. Okay. Be you. Okay. He doesn't let you. Do oh, that. that's right. I mean, yep. Yeah. So, and it can be any of us all at the same time. It's not like one one person. It, it's if you wear this hat, then you are an enforcement officer. Is that correct? I don't know what you're. I don't understand what you're asking. If you are the animal control officer, you are an an enforcement right. officer. Yeah. If you are a select board member, you are an enforcement you officer. Could be. Could oh, say. Say a little more about that. Does it? You do, have to be designated. Okay. If you're designated as an animal control officer, um, but it could be more than one person. Yeah, right. I mean, we have two animal control officers. Right, we and we have could have. Two have but we don't. Okay. Hey guys, it's really hard to hear. Can you guys go outside, maybe? So, so okay. So, an enforcement author, officer yep. is is authorized to recover in the following amounts. So, so what, I, what I couldn't get a clear grasp of is how clear, how, cl how clear is it that we, we do not, I'm gonna say my view, uh, so this is a, a we that maybe it's just Sharon. We don't want to be fining people $160 or $100 because they waive the civil charges uh, because they were, the chickens are in the road. So, so how can we, as we pass this ordinance to address habitual repeat big problems with very dangerous situations, also within a, a clear table? We, we, that's a good question. The group talked about it several times. We asked Jim about it. And the enforcement officer always has discretion. So, so some of it, you know, is so my cow gets out, you know, every other month and I go and get it and bring it back in and put it back in. My cow gets out every day and is in the middle of the road and cars can't get by. It's going on my neighbor's yard and eating her daisies. Um, that's different than the occasional, like when John's cow, cows got out today. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a lot of, there is discretion, and we talked about that, and there's no good way um, in working through this to put this in here other than you know that the animal control officer doesn't really want to do this, find anybody. So when you've got a situation that we've had time and time again, you know, right. we have to do something about it because it's a danger to the general no. public. I get that, I do get that. I wonder, if an animal, any of any person who is appointed as an enforcement officer, if somebody calls and complains about the chickens in the road, is that animal enforcement officer going to be comfortable saying, even though the town ordinance says I can go down the road and, and find uh, $160 and they can wait for 100 are people going to, is the enforcement officer going to feel empowered and comfortable saying, yeah, I'm not doing that for chickens in the road. I think that we have to give them that. that we, have to have yeah, to, we have to have that conversation that, you know, this isn't just to be done willy-nilly at the drop of a hat. This is when it's a serious matter, like in Maple Corner. And I can see Doug shaking his head at Sharon. So obviously they've talked about this. I, let him know. I don't agree with it. He doesn't no. agree with any of it. And I let him know, yeah, I did let him Doug know that this was going yeah. to be on the agenda tonight. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the ordinance. I don't, I will, I will be 
I will be really unhappy with where we've landed if we're finding people because the chickens are in the road. That's well, kind of that's right. my right. thing. Yeah. And, and if that happens, I don't, and I don't think that will happen because yeah. the two animal control officers were in, involved in this discussion, and they don't want to be doing is that. There a, is there a, <clears throat> this has to be approved by motion. Right? Yes. So what if the motion, which we'll show up in a minute, says, whereas we are concerned with repeated evaluations by large animals mm -hmm. and, and want to have this town to have a tool to do something mm -hmm. about, about that kind of a situation as opposed to occasional ones, comma, mm -hmm. we are proposing this work. We propose it up. Yeah, and we did talk a lot about this discretion and how do you write that in do yeah. this. It's almost impossible. You know, does it happen five times and you give them a fine? Does it happen 25 times and you give them a fine? And it's just impossible to really write there is, in. There are situations where when you have a fine that's too high, it's too big a stick. So people aren't willing to use it even when even discretion when they tells them they want to. I don't think a hundred bucks is that. In other words, the process, they have discretion to either prosecute or not. And they just won't in minor cases. In major cases, I, I don't think the $100 is too high. Is the, I want to let the board finish talking before I call on them. Did, did you consider um, something like an enforcement author, officer is, requi is authorized but not required? Did you guys like go down all those rabbit we went holes? All, we went down all those rabbit okay. holes, and there's just really no good way to word it. And if we have an animal control officer, constable that's not at, not is out of out of control, then that's when we have to. Okay, so it becomes a management problem. It's a management problem. I, I can be okay with that because I know we have to make a place to start, and I know Katie's going to do an excellent job. Writing in, we're not going to be finding people for chickens in the road. We like chickens in the road. <laughs> well, I do. Chickens in the road are different than somebody's Absolutely. horses that are kicking people and eating people's gardens. You know, that's yeah. But poultry is in here, so it covers right. the whole gamut. And and that's by just by the nature of the statute that talks about domestic right. animals. All right. So okay. I guess Doug and Scott want to make a comment. I don't like that whole thing. I find it a health reason. And, and this is Vermont. This is town of cows. And you're talking about controlling chickens and cows and horses. What about people walking dogs? What about people riding the roads and bicycles? They're coming around a the corner and there's three people in the road. That's, you know, I've had people tell me that too today. Mm -hmm. That's stupid. That's, you open up a can of worms you don't need and should be doing it. Try to run this whole damn town. Let us go. We have a right to farm here. My cows never hardly ever get out, but once in a while they do. You take Franks down there, they got chickens in the road all the time. I'm gonna get some guinea in. <laughs> you know why? Because they slow down traffic, but you select boy won't do a damn thing about it. And guinea hens also eat a lot of ticks. Huh? Guinea hens also eat a lot of ticks, so send them my way. <laughs> Should I work for that? Too? I'm gonna put them in the road. Okay, put them in the road by my house. You're gonna have to take me to quarter every day. Just let this go. That woman over in Worcester, where is she in? She's pretty close to the border. You know, maybe we could just push her over the border. <laughs> that would be nice. Huh? And she's right on the river, too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Yeah. Right? So I think you're talking nonsense. The whole thing is nonsense. Okay. This is Vermont. This is the way it should be. People, when I put my gals across the road the last summer, you know, hell of traffic, people drive up to me and they say, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. You make my day to see those nice gals from the road. Mm -hmm. it, you is know? it is nice to see. So leave it alone. Get out of there. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, one more question. Let's ask the question. So, do you have any suggestions, alternative ideas for how we can deal with the problem of Collar Hill? What's the problem? Let's all know what the big problem is. Well, the problem, problem is the problem. problem. The horses get out, they need the garden. They don't, no, they don't get out. Sure. Listen. They don't get out, she lets them roam well, free. Well, sewer, take them a small plane store. You can't. But see, but you see, we need a, a legal basis to take the court. So we're trying to construct a legal basis. So if you can come up with improvements to that language that doesn't limit your or cause concern for you, but allows us to deal with this, 
That's what we're, we're that's what I don't know. We've been dealing with this for two years, three well, years. So what? Deal with things. I've been dealing with <laughs> No, but what but, but it's taken us a long time to come up with the right language on this thing. So that's why we're having problems. Well, I've talked with people around and people do not like it. I think there's one right here. There's some people in this town, not just one okay. right here. So I'm gonna let Leave it alone. Well, I think we should get rid of all the cattle in town. Oh, I just so do just, all just, just so that was the last guy in just, town. Just, just no, Doug, for, just for the record, Charlotte Hanna was part of this working group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And worked on the ordinance. Sharon? Yeah, I mean, Doug, I agree with you right up to the point where we don't need the ordinance. You and I have had this conversation lots of times about how we deal with, with animals. We're on the same page. I, I'm going to say everybody likes to see the cows crossing the road. I don't care if the cows are in the road. They're not just crossing the road. We all feel that way. We have a problem we have to solve. My question is, if we pass this ordinance and we are able somehow through, through um, having the ordinance or through some other something happens in life in the world, solve the problem, we can always rescind the ordinance because we, we decide we don't need it anymore. Right, and that's an option. Right, right. now, if one of the neighbors whose property has been damaged, her dog almost died because the horse kicked it in the face, um, and a bunch of other issues with these animals being in the road, if somebody, Doug, if somebody hits this woman's horse yeah. and kills the driver of the car and kills the horse, is yeah. that? I had the same thing happen to me. My the guy, he ran over my cow. I tried to stop him, he ran over. So, so, the guy. so the neighbors, even if they wanted to go to Superior Court, if we don't have an ordinance, they have no ground to stand on to sue anybody for their no cow, cow being in the road. Cows have the right in this town. Cows have the right in the road. I put that right in. Cows have the right in the road. Okay, Scott, did you have some comments? Yes. That's going to be some work. We've heard this from Charlie. But we're a small town in Vermont. Join us. It's a natural, it's a natural thing. It's like spring. Every spring, my horses get out. And I go get them and bring them back in. And it's spring, right? Next thing you're going to be banning black flies. It's just a normal, oh, everyday thing. That's, that's confidential. Animals. You're not supposed to know yeah. that. <laughs> um, <laughs> horses, those horses are not the problem. It's what? an individual who's a problem. Right. And That's true. That's right. She, we cannot. But we can't do anything can't with her. Out. What are we going to well, do? What good are you? I mean, you know she needs help. She needs. Scott, what do, you want us, what do you want us to do? I want you to forget this. No, what do you want us, no, what do you want us to do? I want you to help her. How are the source of the problem? We've been we doing is, that. It is Scott, insane we've been to make that. policy we, for one person. We don't. And to make horse policy for a human being who needs help is nuts. Do well, I make this that's... policy. For We've been doing it. We've worked. I've worked we personally have... with the father. I stabled up horses on my farm, two seasons, <laughs> and or a season and a half, and it. And some of right, this is not. This is not for one person. It, it is it, for one person. It is it's many ridiculous. people that are being violated. I violate I, I, I violated every year. We don't want to do this. It's hard enough for me to get my horses back in. Don't make me pay $100. Yeah, but you try, you try you to know. get the horses back in. You don't say right. Keep going. I know. You don't There's a difference. Know. I'm, I'm, you know. Me and Doug and everybody who's got our animals are normal people. You're dealing, you're making policy for one person. But Scott, we can't. Scott, we can't. Scott, we can't. You know it's wrong. Scott, yes. we cannot make policy for someone who might have some mental health. Try it. You have a person in town who's got mental health. Scott, we have checked all of this out. There's nothing <laughs> <laughs> the select board you must it. You missed it. You missed it. It's somebody who needs your compassion. And we've done that. We've done that. We've tried that. We've tried, that. We've we've tried, tried that. everything. We've yeah. worked with her father for three years. If you would like years. to go and talk with her, go ahead. It's fine. Don't talk to her dad. <laughs> Don't talk to her dad. Her dad right. says there's nothing I can I do. I she doesn't listen to me. If you will show this ordinance. I don't think we're going to. But I think, I think it shows a huge lack of imagination from all of you people. You're supposed to I, have Scott, your we're finger here, right? no, what's going on in the town. Yeah, no, I. I no. And you've heard this, you've heard this from Charlotte. Charlotte was. Charlotte was on the committee, and, and everything I've said 
she would be saying. She did not say it like that. And well, she, she said it. and she <laughs> she said I I agree. She sent me an email and she said, Yeah, I don't like the, I don't like having a policy, but I see where we need it. When the situation you know, when the situation is resolved or we get a different animal control officer, can we rescind it? That's what she said. After after the overwhelmed by your your you know your lack of imagination. God, it's mental, bad health, policy. mental health issues are not something the select board does. And We're don't give them with an animal ordinance. We have to think about other people involved. Now I'm trying to represent the town. Okay. There's a lot of people there. There's more people who are getting blasted to do something because of this recurring problem that is going to keep recurring. And it's, it is a risk. And so we are negligent if we don't try to deal with it. And we are very, very, none of us want to do this. I have, my neighbors cows in my yard all the time, in my car. I never, that is part of living in Vermont. I don't care. Absolutely. We, we, could, a, we could make a clarification. This. Could, let, let me talk about the prohibition. The owner of livestock shall not allow, permit, or suffer such livestock to run at large in the town of Cowles. We could add a sentence that That's says... That's what I do. Every that, let me, no, listen, yeah. let me finish. Yeah. We could add a second sentence, a clarifying sentence that says um, owners that make a uh, diligent effort to impound their livestock are not considered to having allowed them to run free. So there's a difference. You have a fence, that's considered making a diligent effort. Well, it's kind if of you don't have a fence and you just let them run free because Mother Nature told you to, that's a dip, that's what, that's so a we could clarify that so it doesn't apply to Doug or you. You know, in terms of those, and mine get out every spring too. They and, plugged and up they, Pat Finney's yard what, and then I got him back and I fixed his yard. One of, my, one of my greatest fears, and it has been right along for years with this situation, is that somebody driving a car comes around the corner, hits that horse, kills the car, the driver of the car, kills the horse, and then the town has not done anything to try to help control the situation. You just listed all the things you've done to try to control the situation. You've told me all the things you've done, all the compassion you've had, and all, all the things I mean, you've had to work with this one person. And it didn't work. And it, well, then you've done everything you need to do. No, we don't. Exactly. We, need, we need to be able to impound the horses. No, we knew we knew or should have known that we should pass it's not the, the horses. To if, the, if, when the horse is there, run, be if my else. cattle, if I let my cattle run free all over town, and I'm you don't do that. And I, I know if you I know. if I did, no, you would But no, that. if but, but, but this is yeah. not for that. If I did and I didn't care, <laughs> and I didn't care, the town needs to be, have a mechanism to grab those cattle and impound them, and either force me to put a fence up. That may be a town in Long Island. It's no, not this is. Well, yeah, that's a fucking insult. Excuse my French. <laughs> you know, well, Scott. John, I know John. where you're from too. All right. John. All right, John. We need, I guess John. we need to. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. Enough. We're gonna take a. We're okay. gonna take. Yeah. We're going to take yeah. a five-minute recess. I agree with Everybody, you. go out and get some fresh air. <laughs> five minutes. You right into this is subject to judgment. So what one person thinks is not habitual, somebody else might. Somebody else might think that the cows got out five times, and that's too many. Right. And somebody else would be, say, 25 times. So I don't know how you write that. It's impossible to write that. I guess that. my view of this ordinance is, it's flat. despite the, it's very clear, it gives pretty clear guidance to an animal control person. It says to them, that there's a number of hurdles they have to go through. One is they have to determine that it's a habitual problem. Number right. two, they have to, it requires that they ask the person to construct whatever fencing is necessary to contain the animal. Well, if there's already a fence to contain, if they discover that there's already a reasonable effort being made to control the animal, well, then they don't do anything. Right. It's only mm -hmm. when they determine that there isn't reasonable effort to control. Mm -hmm. And then they have to ask them to install it. Mm -hmm. If they install it, then that's fine. It's only with someone who creates the problem habitually 
doesn't install, doesn't make the efforts necessary to contain the animal, then they can be charged under the ordinance. Can you, can you, because Doug has joined us again, would you, what you just said was really helpful, and can we pull that up again so we can actually look, Mark, would you walk us down through all of those steps you just underscored of what has to happen before? Yeah, the only problem is I, this is so far away I can't see it, but in the future I'll print these things out. But <laughs> the way the ordinance works is, you know, obviously the prohibition, as is often the case with these ordinances, is relatively wide, broad. But then what has to happen is, if there's, if there's if, a problem. If, if there's a problem, then they have to give the, let's say so there's an animal running around and the owner isn't, does, if the owner takes the animal in, well then there's no problem, right? It's only when the animal's running around, so they get a bunch of complaints, the animal's running around. Then, they have to, and they say, okay, I'm going to take the animal like you did. Somebody says, I'm going to take the animal just for everybody's safety somewhere and put it there. Then they have to say to the owner, once they can figure out who it is, you have to fix whatever fence it is or whatever so that it's contained. And the owner has the right to do that. And then... And there's the, no fines yet. There's no fines. If the owner does it, mm -hmm. then that's called satisfactory completion. And then they return it to the owner. Right. If the owner doesn't do it, you know, the thing is running around and there is no effort by the owner to contain it or fix the fence or do whatever is necessary, then they can say, okay, we're going to penalize you with a penalty of 100 bucks. So here's a real case in point. I bought some cattle a decade ago and they released them into really good five wire high tensile fence uh, area up on Robinson Hill and these things blasted through that fence. Right. It took me yeah. three weeks to catch them yeah. and we caught them. But I literally had, it was like catching a, a fisher or something. These things were like wild. I, I wish I never bought them, but I caught them. That's but it, I was making a diligent effort and it went into a fence and as long as I made an effort, even though they still ran around, I would not have been fine, correct? Right, correct. Right. It's only when someone doesn't make an effort. I mean, I had, we woke up one day and found two cattle in the back of our yard, and everybody's calling around, and we found out it was Sam and Brooke. And they, you know, it's like you said, when a cow wants to go somewhere, they go. Yeah. And so they improved their fence, you know, and finally one of them, and they're hell to catch. So I, I think that the ordinance is pretty clear the way it works is someone has to be, say, I don't care. Derelict. Derelict. And then, even then, the animal control officer has to give them 48 hours notice right. and say, what are you going to do? And if they're out there fixing things, that ends it. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Right. Good. So, so um, the there. only thing, the only, the only thing again, I, I mean, people let their chickens run, and there is that. That's the whole point: is their free range. I, I just want to say out loud, I hope we're still okay with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, think anybody's having a problem that. with chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we say this does not include poultry? It does. So. Small. Well, why don't we say this does not include poultry? Then that's not an issue. It's just large animals. So, Doug, you have one more comment before we move on? You know, when I bought my farm years ago, the inside of Gene Hickey moved in, just below me. Right? I'm sorry, I didn't know what you said. Gene Hickey. I am still in the noise, I know. Inside of Gene Hickey, two oh. women. Bought some land below me. They got that red house down there, it's nice. My cows got down there, and there's a law somewhere that says you have to power the line it is yours and your other part is there and you have to be, take care of your line fence. <coughs> so we went to court, we, my high attorney, they, they filed over, they, they were smart enough, so they decided that yeah, they're responsible for the fence on their side of the road, on the side of it, you know? 
you know how it goes, you know, the old time I used to say, you stand on your side, and you and I talk about, this is yours and this is mine. You know, you've got to keep... You've got that's to keep, a property line fence. Property that's line a, fence. That's not a line You've got to be responsible for that. Even though you don't have a cow or a calf or a chicken, you've got to be responsible for that. And I said somewhere in, in Vermont, it's a lot. You have to be responsible for keeping your fence. So if you've got a nice house up on East Hill, <laughs> and the, chick, the cows get up there, you've got a fence line, you've got to keep your fence up to keep the cows up. Okay, yeah, so, so we, you think what does the so we can take think out, about taking take chickens out, out? We can take out poultry. Yeah. And you had some guinea hens. A, a sentence. Mm. Poultry's coming up. So you're all set with your guinea hens. I, I had suggested a second sentence to clarify and mm -hmm. eliminate the concerns. Katie, of, are you getting this? And eliminate the stated concerns, but it seemed like some people didn't want to listen. Um, Right. Under what prohibition? So the prohibition says the owner of livestock shall not allow permit or suffer such livestock to run at large in the town of Callis. Repeated. But then, but yeah, then, then how do you define it? Well, we had a second. We had a second. What, 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 what did you say in the heat of the moment? You said in the heat of the moment, it shall not include it. You said something like. Uh, oh, allow. You said it. The, the aforementioned okay. shall not improve uh, livestock owners who pursue with diligence the containment of their. You said it affirmatively. A, a, a livestock owner who who takes affirmative action to affirmative action. It might not be right, but right. I think that's the right to, word. But, <laughs> but takes action to yeah. Takes to, action to to, um, to remedy the at large no, no. condition or something. What it is is the no, prohibition. Yeah. This prohibition yeah. Yeah. shall not include um, situations where the owner of the livestock has taken prudent measures to contain, there we go. contain the animal. Right. Responsibility? Yeah. Katie's yeah. got her hand up. Katie, do you, Katie, do you want to read that? Katie, can you read that back? I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm lost as to where we are. I could type while you're talking, but I'm, I'm just okay. lost where, so where in this we are. Pro, under prohibition, Katie. Go That's down, Katie. Paragraph number three, prohibition. Okay. And so there's a first sentence that defines what's prohibit, prohibited. And then we're going to add past the, the pit period at the end of that sentence, a new sentence that says, and Mark's going to reconstruct okay. it for us. Uh, This prohibition shall not include um, situations where the owner of the livestock has taken reasonable measures to contain the animal. Okay. Okay. Contain okay. or, yeah, that, that works. Mm -hmm. And then how do you define Period. reasonable? Is that left yeah, that's, up that's, that's, I, I that's our term, that's a legal. That's a, it's that a, a lot of laws have that. Okay, so that would be up to the discretion of the, the animal. It just gives the animal control officer guidance and discretion. Okay. Yeah. okay. No, no. I think there's a law that's saying you uh, horses have the right of way. That's different. Huh? That's different. That's different. In the road. Well, I have horses in the road. See, yeah, I have horses in the right of way. But they're not under her control. Huh? A horse under control. I don't think it says that. Well, yeah. It does. If you're riding the horse, you get the right of way. Yeah. If you're, you know, I get back here, you know, like, you know, when I was a kid, there's 55, but now there's none, and now you guys want to just push. This is a, a rural town, and I'd hate to cut out farmers. It makes me damn mad. I, I don't. I, don't I think, think we're you're cutting out farmers. It's crazy and how. But and, there's nothing we can do about crazy. Well, I know. There's nothing we can do about dumb either. There's crazy in town. It's been running rampant. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, we're doing. We're. We're doing the best we can, and and welcome to a con drop it. welcome to the conversation we've been drop having. It was not it wasn't this energetic, but we've had very similar conversations with people who have a very different point of view. Right. We've said several times if we're able to solve the problem, then I we can rescind it. We can rescind it. We have delayed this. Okay, so we're going to have to. But you should be going to have to. Already had his hand up a bit ago oh, I'm sorry. before we took our break. Right. 
I'm sorry, I didn't see him. Um, I think it's sort of was addressed, John, you were talking about if someone has a good faith effort or that language can be written in, but I think what you just said, <coughs> the language just did solves a bunch of that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what Mark did. All right, so we need to make a mo I think we need to make a motion to make those changes, take out poultry, add that sentence, and we're going to have to take this up again, I think, at our next meeting. With or, because of the changes. Because of the changes, yep. Yeah. No, so, no, you can amend it. Or you can it's amend it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Materially amend it in a yeah. big way, and you can. Okay. This yeah. is what discussion and okay. testimony is okay. for. Okay, so it's clarification. That makes that's good. All right. So, is there a motion to approve the ordinance to regulate livestock running at large with the clarification as amended, as, as amended or as discussed? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, any further discussion by the board? All right, are you ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes. Any opposed? Hearing none. The clock starts ticking. Okay, all right, so let's move on to going back to the curb cut. Doug, thanks for coming. Thank you, Doug. You want to give that? Was it a yeah, we, I, we already talked to her. Okay, so what's the, what's the scoop? So um, there is a chart that talks about site distance. Okay, guys. In the in the the B what is this B seventy one? B seventy one, yeah. B fifty two. It sounds like a, a rock group. So it does. I, yeah, it I does. Hesitate. Um, there was the B fifty one. There's a site distance chart, and the first column has the speed. 25, 30, 30 by 40, so on, and 65. And then there's a second column that talks about minimum stopping site distance, mm -hmm. and it has stopping site distances allocated based on each lot speed line to each speed line. And then it says minimum intersection site distance. Um, so we have a 35 mile an hour speed limit, which by the way, I think is way too fast. Is that much there? Yeah. Really? It's not good. I did not good. Um, and so the minimum site stopping, the minimum stopping site distance is 250 feet from the intersection. Mm -hmm. There's more than that site stopping distance. Okay. Um, and the intersection site, site distance, you can see it. You know? I mean, the site distance there is really good. Yeah, it's in, either, in either direction yeah. that you yeah, the only, The only problem is if you go north, but it's well beyond 300 feet, says Alfred, is there's a bend actually right when you come out of the woods, and you've got to go slow going north and south there because yeah. all of a sudden you're upon people. It's both a function of the tree cut coverage and the bend, but this, okay. this is beyond that. So it meets the B-71 standards. Yes, that's how I And there, you want a 15-inch collar? 15-inch collar. Okay. So would somebody like to make a motion? So Alfred call? reviewed this with me, so now Alfred, yes, Alfred agrees with that. Okay. I'll make a motion to okay. accept that curve. Yes. Okay. Subject to those conditions. Yeah. Subject to conditions. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for being patient. Thanks, okay. Is that it for me? It is for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, town hall usage yeah, policy. Thank you. Town hall usage policy, anyone? May I approach the. Oh, we can come see them. Come join us. <laughs> if everybody's had their vaccine, you can come join us. Great. Thank you. So Do you. Um, this is our honor. Cliff, do you want to drive <laughs> to look through the audience or what? Um, yeah, I can do that. able to join us tonight to join us so we anticipate that there may be questions related to some of the other oh, Scott would be saying um, I thought he would but 
I guess he changed his mind. Okay. John, for what it's worth, I don't think Scott was making a, a play on people's personalities. I think he was talking about the difference between geographical location between a country farm you know, on a dirt road versus he said New Jersey. He could have said, no, he said, he could have said New York. And, and it showed his ignorance because where I grew up, it was way more rural than here. And I, don't think and I worked I don't on farms on Long Island when I was 19. Guys, we're not at this. So, we're but you can't. It was more about him not disagreeing with me and going personal. I kind of know Scott forever. Just like yeah, it's okay. But we're done. It's okay. Sorry. Katie, did you pull this up? Isn't that it? Katie, yeah. you're on mute. Yes. Um, yes, you, I pulled it up. Can you see it? Yes. Yep. Would you please collapse the sidebar? That's a good question. It's the little, <laughs> it's the little uh, triangle that's pointed to the sidebar about the middle. I think I've just lost it. Hang on a second. Collapse the whole thing, right? Or I can pull it up here. Okay, click if, if you want to pull it up to be reviewing. It looks really long. That might be great if you're willing. So while you're doing that, Cliff, um, Betsy, are you wanting to talk to, to us about something, or are you just listening? That's it. I'm just listening. I haven't listened for a while. Oh, okay. Well, you got a good night. You picked a good night to listen. <laughs> so it seems. <laughs> okay. Not the solution we were looking for. We definitely should invest in a mouse, an external mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. consistency across all of our uh, town policy documents, as well as being able to implement a, um, a rep control uh, mechanism that would allow you to look at a master list of all the town's policies and see when and how often they're supposed to be reviewed and uh, list the most current rev of it. So each of the policy yeah. documents would have a unique rev yeah, that great you assign to it. Love it. So that's what got us to this document. So I will just kind of go through. Um, I don't think I need to read it verbatim, perhaps when we get to the actual policy section. But um, each of these, uh, if the select board opted to go forward with this template, each of the policies would have these main sections as you see in the um, table of contents. But not necessarily every policy is, is going to be in, is involved in this one. So you don't necessarily have to have a table of contents. The template would, would indicate that. The policy could be a simple one paragraph thing. You don't need to bullet point that. Uh, so we know the history of the hall, uh, when it was constructed, and uh, how it came to be. 
Great. Definitely need to get a mouse, guys. Yeah, it's finicky. You bugger. Mm -hmm. And blah, blah, blah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good policy. You should just pass it. Let me back up here. It's finicky. Hey, Cliff, I'm happy to put it up on the screen if that's easier. We're good. We're right. getting there. We got it. Let me see if I can share it with everyone. No? Okay. Thank you. What did you do that for? It's being miserable. Oh, man. I hate this computer. Okay. I have a backup plan. Okay. Do you mean like hard copies? You can't just get that X up top in the corner. We we got booted out of the Zoom session. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh. Oh, how come? Because of the finicky uh, keyboard. Oh, uh, keyboard. Why don't you have a new key computer, Madam Chair? Well, this is the one that we got from the zoning administrator. Oh, okay. uh, not very good. Yeah, it is new. Yeah, it is new. Okay, Katie, why don't you share it for the benefit of the people who are on Zoom? And I will share it on the screen here for the select board. Okay, so we're up to page two. Yep. And of course in Google Docs, the link's not going to work. Right. Okay, so as we know, um, the Design Review Board approved the change in the use. So it's no longer just a facility for municipal activities. It also can be a place to have public activities, cultural activities and whatnot, private parties. Um, the way to think of this process is this is the master document. The select board owns this document and they can decide what can happen here or can't happen here. You, you enter into a, a management agreement with the Friends of Callis Town Hall or some other group down the road. This is the document that controls what happens, regardless of what's in that contract. Because the way we're writing that contract is it says it has to align with this policy. Got it. Yeah. The contracts are subordinate to this. First, the right. first yeah. And then the rental agreement will follow suit. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and you sent an email talking about this requirement for renters to have received a copy of this and acknowledge it. That's built into the rental agreement that we're working on. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Now we're okay. We're looking at Katie's version of the document now. Katie, could you scroll up? That's working better. Okay, uh, a little bit more. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything on the previous page. Yep. So the main things that drive this policy and inform it are the decision by the DRB the certificate of occupancy, as well as any applicable federal state laws. Um, and you will see later in the document there are links to some of these other resources that help define this policy. Okay, Katie, please scroll down to individuals, entities affected by this policy. So basically, who needs to be aware of this? Well, anyone who is a town official on any of the committees or commissions, um, employees, anyone who's use, utilizing the hall for municipal business. Uh, we also put in a requirement that uh, people who are on the board of the members of the Friends of Cows Town Hall need to understand this policy and be aware of it. And finally, the third party individuals or groups, organizations looking to rent the hall. Not kind of speaks to your... And then, like I say, we'll build that into yeah. the rental agreement. So, responsibilities. Um, this is another thing you do in standard policy documents. You, you line up who's responsible for doing what. Um, pretty straightforward here, the select board reviews the usage policy annually. Um, in concert with the Friends Group, we would work together to review and update the management agreement once we're in, in an agreement and in a contract with each other. We would work and look at that annually to make sure it stays tracking to this document. Um, 
there are sections in the stated policy where there could be exceptions, but those are requiring approval by the select board. So that's another responsibility of the select board to determine if that exception that's being requested can be allowed. Um, of course, making sure that somebody's taking care of the, the hall and keeping it clean and whatnot. Um, making sure that we have our warden who's able to assist in the year-round maintenance, um, which we do have one. Um, coordinating with the highway department to make sure that uh, the parking areas are usable year-round. And uh, then also another idea that came out of the discussions of the friends is it would be nice if we developed a year-round maintenance plan for the hall. It spells out, this is what we do in June, this is what we do in July. And the friends group would be more than willing to help the select board develop that. And then once we have it... So that would be like, when do we board. put the plywood up against the windows when it's... Exactly. That kind of thing. When do we chain, turn on the heater? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Things like this. Uh, how often do we need to flush the the, the um, water heater? Yeah. Any number of things like this. Okay. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, as John and the crew were putting the building together and installing a lot of these systems, uh, Donna Fitch is creating a master book that has all of those systems and their owner's manuals, and we can refer to that to develop this maintenance plan. Good, that's great. The town clerk will be responsible for making sure the policy is published to the website and that uh, a file of the signed copy is is in hand. Um, actually, I skipped the section of Katie's sleeve. If you could scroll back up a little bit. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, the other committees, commissions, employees, um, we kind of have to get back into the habit of this, of notifying the town clerk of when we're having meetings. Mm -hmm. And then the town clerk, of course, will make sure that those end up on the calendar. So this is going to become really crucial once we start scheduling other activities at the hall. And I'll talk in a minute about how that's going to work. Okay, good. I was going to ask. Um, and, of course, the requirement that we're asking everyone, Denise recently sent out an email to all the committees, hey, please, you know, pick up after yourself. Don't leave trash in the building. Um, and, of course, once again, be aware of the protocols and guidelines within this document. The um, other part of the town clerk's job is to make sure that all of these events end up on the town calendar. But the friends will maintain a separate events calendar. And what we're hoping to do, or you can speak to this, um, the events coordinator would put an event onto the events calendar and it would replicate over into the town calendar so yeah. the town clerk so doesn't have to magically put it in. Yeah, the hope yeah. is that there's two calendars that talk to each other that, that would be have, um, you know, what the public will, it'll be visible somewhere where both, I mean, what you input gets put onto this calendar, what we input gets put onto this calendar. So, and then we'll see discrepancies, we'll see what's over. Well, open. what we put on the calendar will also be seen on your calendar. We'll both be able to see each other's. I, I, I'm not 100% sure of that, but I want to make sure that I'm going to make that. That'd be pretty cool. So, so that's of course, the plan. if the town, if we, as lay people, not lay people, but volunteers, mm -hmm. but town officials nevertheless, goof up and forget to install some some dates on the calendar and then the friends do some bookings for some weddings or something. And we're like, wow, that conflicts, we need it all. We would, yeah, we have, doing that? I know it's gonna happen. I'll be speaking to that out. a little bit. It is talked about in here. Okay. We're hoping to avoid that scenario Excellent. as much as possible, but right. we realize right. that it, is very likely. Um, also, there could be occasion where some statute or emergency situation arose and right. something had been booked and the select board says, we ought to cancel, we have to have the hall for that date and time. Yeah. There's no other way around it. Yeah. Um, but it's really going to be crucial for both teams to use those calendars. Yeah. That's how we're going to make it work. Right. That's right. And I think the municipal activities in the hall are going to be up and running and already bred into the system long before right. your friends is Because there's a rhythm there, there right? I'm guessing yeah. when, you know, the rare times we have a script like that, mm -hmm. most of those circumstances would be something we could accommodate anyway, or when, Well, you know, keeping in mind too, municipal activities primarily are occurring on this floor, 
right. cultural public activities yeah. occurring upstairs. Yeah, yeah, and the only thing I can think of is some kind of an emergency management situation comes up. Right. And we yeah, have to use different. and we have to use this space, but we also have the town office. Mm -hmm. right. So so I looked into the website a little bit and um, we found out from Katie what the town uses. Mm -hmm. And you know the six little stops that are on the town website? Mm -hmm. um, when I spoke to the .gov website people, they said it will save money and it will be easier to mesh together if we can be a stop, if we can be added to one of those stops if the town hall is actually one of them. Yeah. And the town gives us permission to access just certain pages that that like I can run certain pages on that, but it's within the town catalyst mm -hmm. website. It saves money, and you know it'll mesh up better, and our calendars will talk to each other. So it's very similar to what they have at uh, Plainfield. So if you if you want to send us something and you know put it in a document or you know send us something about what what your proposal is and how it would work and all that then we can put it on the yeah. agenda right and then what we would do is you know propose something and maybe have some sort of you know in in blue or something that you know someone has requested this time so you see that you know yeah. but but right yeah okay yeah send just put something in writing and when we have time, we'll put it on the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving on to responsibilities of the friends. Um, acting as an authorized agent of the select board, once we enter into this management agreement, that's a crucial element to understand that the friends are acting as agents of the select board when they rent the hall out. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I can hear now. Okay. So what else were you going to say, Mark? Will Passy ensure this building is okay. used? So we, we are in the process of researching the insurance. What we know is that the town's insurance through Passive would not cover these activities. So that means the friends are going to have to have their own policy for these activities. And the next layer of that is, is if the people, the person, or group renting the hall wants to engage in some activities that require an additional permit, like serve alcohol, they have to, the caterer has to carry their own insurance and whatnot. We're in the process of educating ourselves on all of that, which is why we won't be ready to meet with the select board on the 19th, as we'd originally discussed, because um, 
we are just now getting in touch with people who can answer all these questions for us. But yes, the short answer is we have to have a separate policy. But so the building is currently insured by passive, passive right? For municipal the, activities. The right, friends would have we to would, get. Well, I think we're going to get some sort of insurance. Insurance. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that would be in the management agreement. Yeah. Right. And then yeah. possibly, like you said, any professional vendors, caterers. Right. I mean, also and we've got language to that effect them. in the drafts of the management and rental agreement, yeah. but we want to nail it because we want to know what levels of coverage we need to have. And a lot of times you can get these vendors and stuff um, can add you as a writer. That's the requirement in that document. So, so responsibilities, I mean, there's a lot of detail in terms of yeah. each entity's roles and responsibilities. Friends has a lot of detail. Why don't we add a bullet that says friends will be responsible for ensuring that there's a policy to cover it. And we got to figure out what the policy. You mean insurance policy? Yeah, that and that this building, the replacement. What did we figure out? Replacement cost is one point one million dollars. No, like more than that. So, 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 so there, there's the if they burn the building down. Yeah. And and if someone and just starts a campfire out there and they burn the building down, and then passive then won't cover it. So are we right. going to require if it's a cultural activity? If it's a cultural activity, it will be on the friend's insurance to do that. And if it's a vendor, like with a food cart or right. somebody serving alcohol, yeah. they, so would have, have they have to have they have to have right. their friends as a right. So but we should have that, that that's a responsibility. If, if the friends are gonna make ensure and scrutinize and screen and ensure that the policy meets standards, but we should recognize that. I can add as a bullet point here that yeah. is in the management management agreement as I well. I would say it would be a good thing to put it as a bullet clip. I think yeah. just because yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's a big deal. I should require a certificate of insurance. Yeah, it's yeah. not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Um, okay, so I've got that bullet and, point. And I think, hold on, I, and I think uh, the select board at the select board will decide uh, coverage limits um, or coverage needs and limits I guess. Well and maybe the select board wants to review and understand the coverage that the friends have taken out and the value that we need to basically I'm, we need to approve that policy. That, that's probably, to me that's the biggest nut here. That sounds like that I've been listening for well, I think we're gonna keep struggling but for the line between the management agreement and and this document and us approving the coverage limits feels like a, it can be in the management agreement to do that. Do we approve the management agreement? Yes. Yeah. So yes. That's, like a contract. That's, that's not here. That's, that's a contract. Not, that's this different. is our policy that we unilaterally pass. So the management agreement is an uh, agreement. No, no. But I mean, is it should say in here that our obligation is to approve the form of management? It's up there. Yeah. It's, it's, yes. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Okay. And it also is reiterated okay. under the Friends bullet points. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Did so, we, did we, by the way, introduce you to Mark, our new slot board number? We met out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> are we trying to get through this whole thing tonight? I think we are. I was hoping to. Well, stop. Oh, no, no, no. We got, got more to go. Uh, well, so, the last couple pages are just a lot of links, so I don't think we have to. Yeah, that's right. But if everybody, I'm assuming everybody's read this. Oh, yeah. I read it. Yeah, it's, really, it's really well and, done. <laughs> and it's very well done. So maybe we don't need to do it line by line. But if somebody has something specific, yeah, it's really detailed. It's good. Um, no, you guys did a terrific job. So before anyone brings up any other points, I want to make sure I'm clear on what you've asked me to do so far. And under the friends of the Cows Town Hall, in that first bullet point marks suggested that we should add some language something to the effect of for the act as authorized agent of the select board to approve use of the space and ensure that individuals groups organizations you know, right. blah 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 right uh john wants a bullet point also under the friends that john says, and mark well i think all of us all of us the select board has requested that we add a bullet point that <laughs> Friends of Town Hall are responsible for maintaining insurance that will cover non-municipal activities of, at the hall. Right. You and just request certificates of insurance from anybody that you know that you know, that's easy. 
Right. Well, that's how we'll do that, but this is the overarching responsibility. Yeah, right. Um, then there was a third bullet point discussed as possibly going under the select board of the select board has the responsibility of determining if the coverage is appropriate, but then I heard a suggestion that perhaps that's more appropriate to include in the management agreement. Is the select board in agreement with that? Yeah, I mean, this is a policy. Yeah. The management agreement is a contract, so that's different than a policy, in my mind. Yeah. And keep in mind, you can change it this is time. a policy that the select board owns. Yeah. You could meet next week and change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Well, you know, we don't, frankly, we don't cede our authority. We can't. You know, we can't. Well, and I think also, um, you know, we want to work together, obviously. And this is a, you know, it's such a beautiful building to only use yeah. on Monday yeah. nights. Is it for is people it, to yell at each other at select board meetings? Is it our intention I want to yell that, that all the use is free? Or no. that the use could be charged. Right. There's no, there's, 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 yeah, you just you don't have all the okay background yet. So that's, that's why the there's a rental agreement and there'll be a fee schedule. Right. When right. you see the management agreement, part of the management agreement involves discussion with the select board between the friends and the select board to set the rental fees. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And in anticipation of other questions, all of the rental fees go to the town. So yeah, that's that's where well, we'll it those. starts becoming a benefit. Right. I mean, it'll it's help sustain the building and exactly. Uh, so we still have it's nine o'clock. How much do you want to just? If anybody has a comment or a question, no. I have. Tell I me have, how you want to proceed. I have three things that I flagged. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, one is um, I am. Can you tell us where you are? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Page five under restrictions. Page five under restrictions, Katie? Yep. Um, so I am, I, I, I feel like it's premature to have the possibility of alcohol. I feel like that's a whole other level of, I don't know, something bigger, different can of worms to, Especially when it's on the select board, unless the select board or an authorized agent has approved the use of alcohol for an event, I, I would, I would rather have, and maybe we still have the option of saying we will not approve alcohol for an event because we don't I have no idea what it looks like for us to well to approve. just to throw something in there. If there's a caterer on site serving food and alcohol. They will have permit and insurance. Having alcohol when there's an event because somebody brings their own bottle, is that what you're talking about, the difference? Well, no alcohol shall be consumed unless the select board or an authorization or an authorized agent has approved the use of alcohol for an event. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't, I, maybe you guys all have more experience with that. Maybe that's all you do is say our policy is you have to have a licensed caterer with an alcohol policy and blah 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 period but that's I, yeah my question was what does it look like how do I know that this is a group that we're going to approve alcohol this one we're not and then and us taking up our select board meetings was that's got to be delegated yeah well, I, mean, I, I, I think that we well, like a lot of this was designed so that you aren't the police like okay. we, and the friends the group of the friends was created really for you guys just to say, hey, things are going good, or things are going bad. Not that you're going to be down So the, so the vision is, that's our, that's the vision the is that, in fact, the friends could be the authorized right, agent, right. and we would have a, a policy. It's probably a one-page, one or well, also a one-page policy that says this is the policy for, the town's policy for alcohol. Do you want to take out for an event? There's uh, also, um, at the Big Horn Community Center, if you have an event there, a private event, and you're not using a caterer, but you're having a, a wedding reception, and you're having free, you know, like, mom and dad of the bride are putting out boxes of wine and, and beer, I, and I did this, um, you just get a policy. For that day. When you say policy, do you mean insurance? Yes. yes. 
Okay. I just want to be clear. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy to do online. And yeah, we, like we as friends would require bucks. that of anybody who would be doing an event similar to what she's saying. That they, they would have, have, have their it? own insurance policy that covers that day. Okay. They're easy to get online. Yeah. Yeah, it's the difference between a hosted or a non-hosted yeah. alcohol service. And the the boxes that have to be ticked is whether they're hosting or not hosting the serving of alcohol, they have to have the appropriate insurance and permits if required okay. before we would sign off on it. And that, once again, will be baked right into the rental agreement. Okay, so we're not, we're not making up how to do that. There's no, no experience we're gonna draw from. My, my other thing is um, we have Approval authority. Can you tell us where are I'm, on, I'm on the first page, and then it comes again on page, page six. Page, page, page one. one. Yep. So page six. we have the Callis Town Clerk listed generically. We have Denise listed as chair um, with a name, and I would, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for the select board to start doing something we've talked about doing and haven't really implemented of it isn't always Denise, there's other people who can be point people. Um, and I think maybe we just... So you just said put a title instead of... No, this is well, just leave it blank. Well, but, but also Denise, we can sometimes have a name that isn't you. <laughs> well, let me explain why it reads that way. Okay. In these dot list of documents, it talks about specific documents, like the DRB minutes. Right. If I had a question, I'm a member of the public, and I have a question about those minutes, who should I contact? Right. Well, normally you well, go to the chair. Craig Bowen's no longer on the DRB. Yeah, that's not, the, that's not where his point is. I know, but I can, I know. So, it's already dated. It's just, it, I mean, the, the names are gonna constantly change, and-, and want us to say We so would like to very much to like to not have to update it every time the names change. Exactly. But we don't have generic <coughs> email accounts. The we town clerk them. does. Yeah. I, I think you can just refer them to the town clerk and then the town clerk would refer as needed to a select board member. Yeah. Right. Just say, just say, yeah, we're going to have to cross this hurdle of, of how do we, you know, we educate the town that there's different people who, you know, kind of wear hats for different issues. It isn't necessarily the chair. So, and the, the town clerk could be, could understand, oh, you know, Rick is a point person on. Right, I would just leave it, so, um, okay. anyway, so. And, and, and you know, theoretically, any chair, so, just make up something, a DRB chair, if, if the DRB is unhappy with the performance of the chair, they can say, you know, I want to vote, we vote on the chair position. And that person could not be chair at the next meeting, or right. for that meeting, and actually, uh, my understanding is Peg just resigned, so this is already this is already dated, and she's not the chair. So it's, it's there's good reason not to have specifics right, just like that. Just to say contact the DRB. Okay. What I what I would what a clerk say is for these town related contacts that we just refer them to the town clerk. Yes. The town clerk can point them to the right, right. direction. Yes. Yeah. That makes for sense. these That's other bad. types of documents that aren't necessarily controlled by the town, or like for instance, the certificate of occupancy, we can just t tell them to contact the state fire marshal's office instead right. of the yeah. specific Right, name. because yeah. that name could change too. Um, yeah. and phone number. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so on through through those lists. Yeah, That's an easy change. Yeah. And, you know, I would love to do that because then we're not having to constantly right. update Right, you don't this. want to have to constantly update it. So yeah. some of us do, but none of them. Okay. So, <laughs> so then is the contact going to be the town clerk instead. Yes. Yes. Okay. For then, for the town related documents that are listed here. Yeah. And then he's going to go through and take out Peg's name, take out the fire marshal's name. And what are we not going to have a contact on page one? It'll just be the town clerk, and okay. the town clerk can direct it to whoever. Yep. Okay. So this is going to yep. be town yeah. clerk. Okay. Well, on page one, are you talking about the, the this one? They don't like this. Okay. So can you just say kind of the. Maybe you just say responsible. We'll just say, we just, just say here select we would say select board. Just say select board. Because they're the it ones who approved whoever. it. That's why Denise's name is in there, because the select board approves this document. So if you have a question about this document, who do you contact? Contact Clark. the select board. Yeah, right. Just take my name out of there because people don't like that. Okay. Well, it's just, 
And then we would yeah, have you to could, You could you quit tomorrow and then it's dated already, so. I thought of that. Right, so it's like, <laughs> it's a nice day. I, I wanted to quit for these, an hour ago. For these types of policy documents, it's recommended that you, if at all possible, include a contact. So I could say select board and then put the well, telephone number. Well, when we get around, when we get, when we are able to turn our attention back to our organizing work, then my hope is that we'll have somebody who is delegated as the contact for maybe it's all policies. I mean, there's just a ways to cut it. So, so you know, if there's a question about a policy, and and that's me, then I, you know, a I probably maybe I know the answer, and if I don't, I know you know who to contact, and that could and or it, there's lots of different ways to cut it, but that's the conversation we need to have here and. And since we're starting with the policy before we finish that work, I'm raising it. Okay. So let's just put um, select board. But the question I'm asking, is it all right if I put select board with the town office phone number? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly what we should do. And that's what we should do with all of these kinds of policies and stuff. And this, it's going to be hard to nail down every single thing that somebody's doing and who's doing what. Uh, so It's the first time that we taking this approach, or right. like we're just taking this approach to policy control. Right. So, yeah, you're going to have to figure it out as you go along. Right. That's a yeah. town office number. Yeah, 4568720. Unless so. they print it wrong in the town report, which they've done, and put in my number. Oops. I think that makes sense. It filters it almost through the town clerk, mm -hmm. and they're the that's the, They'll know who is right. they, so they, they know what we We'll have yeah. to listen. Right. Who's, yes. Yeah, that, that's the idea. And it, may, it actually may not be the chair. It may be you. It might be me. It might be, be, you. It might be the point of contact. It might be right. Right. That's that's the best guy for it. All right. So, so we'll make the contacts uh, more generic. Is there any other questions or clarifications no. that I can provide on the I think I, gave, I think I talked to you about the couple There was of a typo that I corrected in my version. Can you clarify? Only one of them. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is, this is, yeah, this is, um, I mean, so thorough, so thorough, yeah, so thorough, well really well done, and we could pick around the edges as we do, well, we're not or we could do. not. Well, you know what, this document, I think this is the first time we've had something like this. You kind of, you can't pick around the edges and know every single thing that's going to come up or happen. Right. Or Next question, year we're going to have to, we have to kind of take it. How's you know how's it working? What do we need to change? What do we need to fix? And we'll learn those things as we're using. Right, we're going to learn. Right. We'll find yeah, out and I, I just want to interject here. Everybody, please make note of what Denise said and bring it well in your head. So a year from you now, you're not saying, "But why didn't you think of this?" No, that's, no, that is exactly <laughs> that, is, that is exactly what we need to be doing. If, and if we had a person who was a policy point person, it'd be like, "Ooh, policy change." Make a note. I, so, I, want, I want a font change. Font, shut up. So no, okay. actually, in the template that specifies so, this font. So my question is: Are we are we gonna? I know it does. So are we going to vote to approve this with the changes, or do you want to see it again? I would just like to get this done. I, I don't think we need. The only, we need the only thing we need. The only thing we need to do is fill in the TBD date, which is so. If we approve it tonight on July 12, twenty twenty one, yeah, then let's. We don't have a practice for our reviewing of policies, but yeah, what, no, I made a whole long list of them that we never. Really I made a list of them too. I went through the website re recently and found, actually found some things that um, the staff, the office fixed for us. But okay, so what I'm thinking is, so you're uh, put in this. Mm -hmm. The dates. Uh, the first. I don't think we have to be exact. I think we can say, two. Frequency of review, why don't we just say July 2022? That's fine. Because we're not going to be able to nail down a date. We to change our, so the dates of our board meetings. And in that matrix on page one, um, the first date adopted would be July 12, 2021. Right, right. The review date gets entered the next time you review the document. Mm -hmm. Right. And oh, under the revision, under the revision. So you leave that blank then? Right. Oh, so it means that they we actually did perform the review. You know, exactly. there is, it is nice to have, I, mean, I remember with the education policies, we actually yeah. had 
a review date on it, so we knew to trigger yeah. at this time we do. Yeah. Well, then what I would recommend yeah, is instead of review date, we say review yeah. by, yeah. and you put a date certain to review it by. Well, uh, but, okay, I guess, and um, once we review it, then we're going to want a way to track. That's your rev control. You see you've got a rev number, um, rev ID. Yeah. IR stands for initial release, yeah, yeah. and the date uh, that it's approved, yeah. the next time you review it, at the end of the document you will have a rev change, and it will name the current rev and what you changed from the prior rev. So, actually I had this, uh, this came up for me when I was looking at another policy earlier today. So, um, what, what, I'm not clear on, maybe we don't have to talk about it now, is how you know when you're looking at a policy what the revision, when, I don't care so much about what the revisions were, but when there were revisions because you don't have to think very hard to realize, oh, I might want to go read the minutes and see when, what changes did we, like, like if you're reading the statutes, you want to, you know, the bottom of the statute tells you when they changed it. Right. And when, what act? So I want to go back to look at the act and see, okay, what did they change in 1999 versus 2006? Okay, so okay. A hypothetical to... situation. Let's say it's a year from now to date. It's yeah. July 12th, 2022, and you review it. Yeah. And you make changes. Yeah. Then the Rev ID becomes Rev A 071222. That's the mechanism to let you know when it was last looked at. And is there going to be a list somewhere of all the changes? But she she wants, she's talking day. about previous iterations. Yeah, only one. So you could, you could list wanted, all the red dates. I wanted, so yes, you, that's what I'm saying. That would be at the end of the document. You would okay. have so initial, we'll first version every is this. Every yeah. revision is oh, every, Okay, right. so right. never, yeah. Right. Perfect. And that list is growing. It doesn't go away. Thank yeah. you. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so do that take care of everybody's questions? So the re it's, this is going to say review do or review yep. by. Yep, I can say review by. Review by, I think, is the way to do it. Okay. And what date do you want to put there? July, July 2022. July 12th. Okay, July 22. Right. And that's essentially the end date, too, so we'll review earlier than that. Well, we have to, right. That's the adoption, the re adoption. We would, date, we would so. be doing. We, we would yeah. be a tight okay. run ship if we were to So do we this. want to make a motion to approve the, um, now I forgot what it's called. The, the Calus Town Hall Usage Policy. Calus Town Hall Usage Policy mm -hmm. with the changes as noted. So, so moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yes. All right. I'm just going to sign the last page. I'm going to send this around that I have here. So okay. today is July 12th. I took the liberty of the page oh, with the red identified. Okay, yes. good. Sorry, so 9.9%. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, that, that was, it was so, I was amazed at how thorough it was you were reading through. <laughs> there's yes, there's a lot you. of stuff. Oh my God. This is, I'm, this I'm is not, sort of unknown because I mean, we're looking at something. Like, what is this? So, like, we're trying to see what like, circumstances they would come up, and they just, I don't know, it, I, hope it's in there. I hope there's no surprises, because that's pretty thorough. Yeah. Adopt the date is 12, 21, too. We'll find out. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, they'll be minor tweaks, and, yeah. and then we'll fix it then. We're trying to cover it. All right, thank you guys. Nice job. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Oops. And you'll let us know when you're ready to do the management to print it. agreement. Yeah, because there's the big one. And what we do is, um, do they send yeah. us a note about the council? Okay. About the, because I think it's, I mean, we can take that up before your yeah. management agreement. So. Yeah, we've been holding on to that just because, I mean, we had to pay for it, so now it's happening. Okay. So I'm wondering, when we had that kind of fun fundraiser thing for the Armstrong Farm at the community center, we had alcohol, but did we not have insurance? I don't know. Not everybody else. Oh, okay. Not everybody else. Somebody, somebody broke some stepped off. away. Yeah. If you guys decided to have wine here tonight, I'm guessing you probably would get it. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's in my it's in my car. I know. I mean, you know, sometimes when people yeah, you know, they have some of the right, right, with a straw. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like the horse? I, 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 I got one more bottle of water just so everybody knows. All right, let's see if we can wrap things up. Um,
Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Cliff. Thank you. Good night. 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 You're welcome. Oh, so I did it wrong. Oh, well, my, my signature is readable. Right? I'll stash it somewhere. Is that file yeah. All right, so let's, let's see if we can get done. It's almost 9.30. Judy has, um, well, let's back up. Jeremy, when he was campaigning, part of what he did was he spent a lot of time in, um, in the town office just hanging out, getting to know things, looking where things are, seeing what people come in with the questions and phone calls. So he was, he's really, he's really um, up to speed a lot. Hit the so ground running. Hit the ground running, that's the right word, John. Um, Judy has had, Judy went in one day and spent a couple hours. You know, he, he kept a, like a list of all the things I needed to come in and help me with. And she did that, and she's suggesting that she keep track of her hours and either monthly or whatever. She'll submit those hours at $25 an hour. You know, no benefits, yep. no, nothing withheld kind of thing. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, perfect. And the last thing. Do we need to formally approve that? Yeah, we probably should. Um, so moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And you get that, Katie? Katie's hands up. Wait, can uh -oh. we? What, Katie? Wait a minute. Wait, let's see what Katie has a question. What, Katie? Can I get a clarity on that motion? I missed, I was I was still writing down the um, the context. I missed the, if there was an hourly rate stated or if there was a limit to how many hours or anything. How, how would you like it said? Can we, yeah, can we actually, can we just out of an abundance of caution because sometimes we get ourselves into these situations where we're, where these, there's a tail that we never anticipated. So what is it, July now? Yeah. What if we say suit through September 30th, the board yeah. authorizes Judy support for Jeremy at $25, at $25 an, hour. Yeah. an hour at a reasonable number of hours. As needed basis as determined as needed. by the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. September. Is that a, is that a motion? That's a motion. Okay. Is that a second, Mark? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 You got any opposed? All right, I think these things are really, this last bit is really quick. Um, Conservation Commission members Neil Maker and Julie Hand need to be reappointed to their, and no, I forgot my, this is why when we were doing this at home, I could have pulled out my town report. I forgot to bring it. Their terms um, have ex ex actually expired last year, and remember we didn't do much for appointments because of COVID, mm -hmm. so their terms expire in 2024. Wait, so is that the, mm -hmm. um, so these are four-year terms? Mm -hmm. So we are appointing them to- Reappointing. Reappointing them for retroactive start date and through, okay. Uh, Got it. The one question I have, and it goes back to the point I made earlier about Katie, that the table captures Alfred's um, appointment as um, expiring in January 2022, which I'm assuming is because we, we formally um, appointed him in January 2021, but in fact, no. Alfred, we appointed him in January 2021, but because we didn't appoint him in July. Right, but he's um, still up in July, right? Yes. Right, so his, his term, Katie, Alfred's term always runs from July to July. No, July, July 1 to June 30th. Right, right. yeah. Right. So, so, regardless so, of when we do the appointment. Yeah. In, and in similar fashion, um, can I? Yeah, go ahead. So, is, is it correct that the term ending for Alfred's should say June 30, 2022? No, it should say 2021. We have to reappoint him. We haven't done it yet. Already. Oh, right. I see. Yeah. Thank you. So in the, in the same way, it makes me wonder, like, how do we, what are the dates? How do we know um, whether, you know, so, so that we, are, we all have a, a better discipline. Um, I was looking at some old minutes. It looked like there used to be a practice of it, of around right right after town right meeting. after town meeting and that's what we usually try to do is try to do it as soon after town meeting as we possibly can the last couple of years has been like 
COVID hit. So, yes. and this time there's been all this other stuff, and that's why I've been periodically trying to get right. some no, of these appointments done. So, so when we say it expires in 2024, are we saying that it, it, let's, it expires in March 2024? I don't think you want to do that because what what the way it works is somebody continues to serve until they're appointed or replaced. Well, we did it without her. I think that's right. understood. Yeah, no, I mean, that, so I don't think if you put in a month and then... But we just did without her. Right, I mean, yeah, it's not Yeah, I still, I mean... But we could continue them in that spot. That's... I don't know. My preference would be to have a March, if it's not March, I don't I don't really care, but some some way of knowing it's, it's, it's time. You know, the time has come. And for people to know... I want to get off, now is my time, when is my time off? If you look at the town report, all of the positions are listed with the year that they expire. Sure, but there's that's not right. a date. It's just a year. It's just a year, but that's because sometimes we get to them in March, sometimes we don't get to them in April. I think we will make, I think we'll make matters more difficult by putting in a month. It gives us eight months to appoint them. I, yeah, I... Can we, can we do this, finish this tonight at least? Yes, uh, Katie. I, yeah, we can finish it tonight. But I'm still. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick with the issue. Yeah, and I'm gonna stick with well, the other side of the issue. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna get an arm wrestle going, and I'll and bring I'll, a I'll rescue you for a bottle of wine. All right. <laughs> a bottle of wine. I like that idea. All right, Conservation Commission, Neil Maker, Julie Hand, to expire 2024. Do you want? One motion for all yeah. this. Yeah. 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 Greg's right. Greg's had a form that I really liked. I guess that's because it comes from the state. It comes from the state. That? It comes from the state. Like that? That could be something that we think about adopting. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, is somebody going to make a motion to approve the slate as noted on the agenda? So, second. Okay. So it's. You second it? Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, with, yeah, with reservations as to our process. Yeah. All right. I guess it's 9.30. Hang on. I got a couple of things I want to just ask you about. Is that okay? Under other business. Yep. Yeah. Under other business. business. Yep. Yeah. Are we there yet? Can be. Okay. So, um... I'm hoping that we're going to start having orders to sign here at this meeting. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Your wish. They didn't they make it around. Yeah, yeah, it's really, you know, I gotta say, it's really, I think it's really hard to sign orders at the meeting because it's, it's I, have two, I have two thoughts, I have two thoughts on it. It's good to sign them at the meetings because if somebody has a question, we can raise it. The other part is it takes, it's hard to concentrate on the meeting and sign orders as well. But we've always done that. But yeah, we have done it that way. We've always done it that way, and I mean, what we were doing worked well for COVID, but I have not. Right. It didn't I haven't work. Made order, order since COVID. I have. I signed no. maybe two sets when other people couldn't, but I would like to still pick them up ahead of time and review them. That's fine. Um, and then bring them to the meeting for everybody else to, because a lot of times I find. Well, you were doing that before too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I don't have any. I don't. That's fine. But I, 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 that. I like to. Read. Oh, you could not sign it at the meeting. You could follow up. Okay, I said. Concretely, <clears throat> this one has three signatures. Yeah, that's this one that's, has two. So somebody Third needs to. Has to sign. I didn't see anybody waiting here. So, so getting ourselves back to regular business after getting our election done and all that. Um, the last time we talked about our guidelines was the end of March, and I had a to-do to make the changes, so our final changes. I did that, and they're in the folder for whatever our next meeting is. I already put them the in. The Yep, they're in the folder. I put in a strikes and highlights and a clean version. Um, and then I already mentioned the Alfred issue. And then the other thing is, I just wanted to say, um, 
the practice, Denise, of having names when we're actually going to do an appointment. Some, we haven't always done that. Is that? Nope. Sometimes there's been appointments made and the name wasn't on the agenda. If that's a new, if it's a, maybe if it's a new. I usually try to. So I just want to underscore that I think that's really important so that for whatever reason people can, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a transparency thing as we, as we yeah, said Yeah, like before. I said, I think I usually try to do that. If you, um, if you look back at the agendas. Denise, I did look back at the agendas and I found times that we didn't. Okay, I'm duly noted. I will try to be perfect, thank you. It's, it's important, people get a chance, people should have a chance to, to know what appointments are coming up, including those of us. I found some, I didn't know were gonna happen on, at meetings I wasn't at, and I was like, what? And, and so I went, I went through and, and you know, looked and... Okay, duly noted. Okay, that's it. That's my list. All right. Would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? Are you okay. are you want to do that? Okay. Yeah. I'll second it. Do that. All those in favor, please say aye. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Anybody else is still there? Thank you. Question? Yes, ma'am. Question. Question.